percent of our fucking generation go marriage. All right, and uh, I grew up living with my mom. She was a real quiet, conservative type woman. The, the type of woman you really want to impress, but you can't because you're too busy being a drug addicted, socially maladjusted woman trying to deal with the fact that your father fucking abandoned you when you were nine. I have a stepmom, a, a replacement mom, if you will. I'm sure you have one. She's the one I would go to when I was feeling really emotionally damaged. But really deep down, I just wanted a, to spark a conversation that would end with, you're not my fucking real mom! I have an older brother, he's actually here tonight. What's up, Ben? <laughs> All right, he was kind of oh, like my pseudo-dad growing up, you know what I mean? He's the one that I looked up to, I fucking admired him. He's who I compared all the guys I dated to, and, and in retrospect, being an adult woman, I probably had a lot of unhealthy, you know, tendencies with my older brother, it's fine. <laughs> I'm 27, I'm legally separated, I have a three-year-old, a fuck ton of baggage, and I'm, I'm really single, so like, my set's only about five minutes, so if you guys are, you know, available after. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as a newly single woman, I'm starting to realize how fucked up, you know, dating is in our generation. Like, I know you guys know, ladies. We all manifest this perfect fucking guy in our minds, don't we? A little something like this. My name's Joe. I'm 27. I'm a fucking accountant. Um, I have a really good 401k, and I've only been with about two to three women because I'm really looking for a deep emotional commitment. And um, I really feel like you could be the one for me. He takes you out to a nice lobster dinner and you're sitting there looking at him in the, looking at him in the eyes and you're like, this guy is fucked up. It's definitely not me. <laughs> you leave that date, you delete his number, you block him, you never fucking talk to him again. <laughs> now, if you're anything like me, the next week you'll meet a really kind gentleman. His name is also going to be Ben and it's not going to be weird that he kind of also resembles your older brother that you admire a lot. <laughs> and he's going to spout off something like this. What's up, guys? I'm Ben. 27. I have, uh... You know, I'm two years clean and sober. Fucking sobriety. <laughs> I've got three kids, one on the way. I'm not sure. We're going to have to give it like 10 to 12 days until she lets me know. But um, I have a lot of commitment issues, severe anxiety, and every once in a while I fuck a hooker or two just to, you know, work out those deep-seated mommy issues I've had all my life. And you're sitting there. So just, give me a minute, because uh, I don't know about the rest of you ladies, but like my panties are so wet right now. Like, I'm going to need a minute to switch them out, because you know what? That's the fucking guy for me, right? Because I can fucking fix him into whatever the fuck I want. And because he's got the same name as my brother, I don't have that awkward explanation when he's railing me from behind and I'm screaming out my brother's name. Anyway, listen, in all seriousness, it's not fucking funny. <laughs> In all seriousness, I am seeing somebody, okay? It's been about two months, and I've realized two things over the past two months. One, I fucking love this man. So much I'm saying fuck like a lot. Number two, racism, it's fucking alive and real. You know. And I'm going to tell you why. So I met this guy in a radio shack, okay? It's where love happens. And I know it seems like it was a little fast, but I brought him home that night. He hasn't fucking left since. And... I know it seems weird because I have a three-year-old and I moved him in so quick, but he's been wonderful, okay? His personality is a little flat, but he's always got a fucking smile on his face, okay? Half the time, he doesn't even give a shit about sleeping with me because he's too busy sitting downstairs in front of the window in case somebody breaks in because nobody's going to do it. Why? Because he's a strong black male and nobody's going to fuck with him. However, every time we go out, we get the dirtiest fucking looks. And I don't know if it's because we're a really attractive, like, Oreo couple with, like, a really white baby. <laughs> but, for example, we go to Red Lobster one day, the three of us. My, my boyfriend, my son, and I. And the waitress looks me dead in the eyes and she says, table for two. And I'm like, motherfucker, my boyfriend is standing right here. Racism. <laughs> she sits us down. She doesn't take his drink order. She won't look him in the eye. She's looking at me like I'm a fucking psycho. <laughs> And you know what? I'm thinking to myself, like, this is really shitty. So, you know, I digress. Here's the deal. I feel like I've gotten to know you guys well enough because I'm probably going to be back because I really don't care if you fucking think I'm funny or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I get out. You know, therapy's really fucking expensive and the co-insurance is like $40 every time I go and I don't got the money for that. I'm separated. So here's the deal. I feel like I've gotten to know you guys well enough where I can introduce him to you, but like, you know, be nice because he's black and really sensitive. And he's also really quiet, so like, give me a second. Have a good night, guys.